What's going on guys? In today's video, I'm going to show you how to switch out your stock clutch basket with an aftermarket billet like this Hinson right here. And I'm also going to go over the Niels clutch mod for the Honda TRX 250R. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. And I just, all right, I'm sorry, guys. I just can't with this mask. Welcome back guys. So yes, we are going to be putting this Hinson billet clutch basket onto our primary drive gear. And we're also going to go over the Niels clutch mod. Um, I do apologize. You'll notice that it's already complete. That's because I already made this video and unfortunately a majority of the audio did not record. So you'll notice there is some lousy audio quality in this video. I do apologize for that. Must be something to do with the coronavirus uh, because that just seems to be affecting everything. So anyways, this is a pretty straightforward process. And while we are focusing on project 250R with this stuff, this video applies to anybody that's going to need a new clutch basket. Um, some of the symptoms that you might be experiencing when your clutch basket is, uh, you know, getting tired and ready to go. Um, you may be getting some slop in your clutch, uh, some weird engagement feelings. Uh, sometimes there's a delay uh, when your bumpers on the inside of your primary uh, drive gear are worn out. Uh, there's also an uneven clutch feel. Sometimes if your clutch is notchy, you might have grooves in your fingers. Um, so we're going to go over all that stuff in this video. And uh, it's always a good idea to switch out your clutch basket, especially if you're doing high performance mods, because it's not that uncommon that a clutch, that a clutch basket will explode, especially when you're running high horsepower applications. So we're putting a lot of money into Project 250R and any project you're working on, you're always putting your hard earned money into it. So you might as well get the security of a solid billet clutch basket. They're gonna be more solid and they're also gonna have a smoother feel than an OEM clutch typically. So swapping over your primary drive gear is a pretty simple task. It may seem a little daunting because you have to drill out rivets and stuff, uh, but I'm gonna show you how to do it. It's really easy to do. We only need basic tools and it's gonna to apply to pretty much any ATV or dirt bike, um, any kind of quad or something that has a typical uh, traditional style clutch like this. It's gonna basically have the same kind of setup and most of the stuff that I'm gonna show you in this video will apply to other models. Something else to take into account is that this is a Hinson billet clutch. It's gonna work with uh, a Barnett, um, Moose, Wiseco, pretty much any aftermarket company that's making a billet clutch is going to have a similar setup and uh, the same kind of instructions are going to apply. All right, guys, here is our OEM clutch basket. Got the pressure plate on there. Don't really need this for right now. Let's just set that aside. And you'll notice, I actually didn't see this when I was taking it apart. This bottom um, clutch fiber must be trashed because... Uh, <laughs> That shouldn't be like that. Those are, it's definitely a broken uh, fiber in the bottom there. So we're about to find out in a second. I haven't actually taken this clutch pack apart, but essentially what we're gonna be doing is changing out this aluminum basket. So we have to take off this primary drive gear. So let's get these clutch fibers out. Oh yeah. Look at that. Oh, blown clutch. I'm surprised I didn't feel that. I wonder if that happened like right towards the end. I mean, dude, it's in like 10 pieces. Wow, that's pretty amazing. Look at that. It's completely busted. Um, luckily, I think we don't have any damage to our boss or pressure plate. Um, so we definitely got lucky in that case. Give you guys a look at this basket. Um, so one reason that you might be replacing your basket is because sometimes these fingers act these are these uh, pieces are called fingers on the clutch and sometimes they actually break off that could be a reason that you're replacing it and they also get grooved this one is grooved and see in each of these fingers there's like a uh, you can see the grooves and it's on both sides usually the side that the drive power is engaging with is the side that's worn the most and what that can cause is an uneven clutch pull so when you pull the clutch, you'll actually feel the ridges as the clutch plates are compressing and decompressing. They're not going to have a nice smooth um, action like you want. So if you're having uh, issues with clutch engagement and slipping and grabbing, um, that could be because your fingers are grooved. So that would be a reason to get a new uh, basket. They actually can be smoothed out with a file. Um, I don't really recommend doing that, but if you don't have uh, the funds or you're in a pinch, you could actually do that. And that would be a, a decent temporary fix or possibly permanent fix. Um, but we're going to go with a billet basket. And the reason we're doing a billet basket is because we're going to have more durability. It's a stronger setup. It's a little bit lighter typically. 
um, so we'll have a little bit less rotational mass, and it's also supposed to have a smoother action um, than, a, than a factory basket would. All right, so here's what we're gonna repl be replacing that OEM basket with. A nice billet hints. It is the H130, it's for a TRX 250R. It's got it right on there, H130. And I believe there's another part number that fits the 250R as well. Um, but I know that this one will work just fine. Um, you do not have to use their, the uh, Henson pressure plate or clutch boss unless you want to do the eight plate setup. And uh, what I mean with that is typically the Honda 250R has eight clutch fiber or seven clutch fibers rather. Um, so if you make the stack a little bit taller with eight, the, um, the clutch is going to be able to handle more power and it's going to last a little bit longer. However, uh, that's not really necessary in my case. And in most cases it's not. Um, so if you do want to get this basket and you want to use your OEM pressure plate and clutch boss like I'm doing, that'll work perfectly fine. You can see the back here. It says right on there, use Loctite 272. And I'm gonna be talking about that in a second. So we'll be transferring that gear over to this basket. And inside the box, Hinson does include uh, some instruction manuals. A lot of these probably get thrown right into the trash. And that's why I'm making this video. But um, it's very, very basic stuff. Uh, but if you haven't done it before though, it can be a little bit confusing. Uh, I will show you exactly how to do it. And they do include the bit the Torx bit for these screws on the back. So just in case you don't have it. And of course, some hints and stickers. So it's a good kit because it's got stickers in it. All right, now what we're gonna do here is pretty basic. We're essentially just taking the primary drive gear and swapping it over to the new basket. Now this is gonna to apply to just, just about any aftermarket uh, clutch basket, like I said before, and it's also going to apply to other makes and models. It'll probably work on most dirt bikes and ATVs, including two and four stroke. Um, I have another video where I do a chariot basket on the Banshee. Definitely check that out if you're doing a Banshee. Um, I actually just rewatched it and it wasn't horrible, um, but it's going to be pretty basic. So the first thing we're going to do is drill these rivets out and take the backing plate off of our OEM basket. Um, it's really basic. So we're going to do it right now and I'll show you the tools we're going to need. All right, so I've got everything we're going to need laid out here. Um, with, with the exception of like a couple attachments and stuff, but this is basically it. Um, so we're gonna need a hammer and punch. We have a torque wrench. You probably could get away without using a torque wrench, um, but you really should have one. We have some Loctite 272 and it needs to be 272. I will explain why in a moment. And of course we have some drill bits and a drill. Any drill is gonna work. Uh, if you don't have a drill or you don't wanna use a drill, you can use a grinder too. Um, cause we're going to be drilling our rivets, but you can also grind them off. I just think that this is a cleaner and safer method. Oh, and of course you have your mask to, uh, prevent getting the coronavirus. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is take our center punch, make a mark in each one of these rivets. That way our drill bit doesn't walk. So you can do it with a regular, uh, clicking punch, or you can use one with a hammer, which is what I'm going to do. All right, now I'm gonna drill these. Uh, I'm gonna start with a smaller bit and then work my way up. You don't have to go deep. You only have to go as deep as the rivet head because once you get a uh, drill bit that's wide enough, the rivet head will just fall right off. Step the bit up and this should take the head right off. Yep, there it is. All right, now I'm gonna punch these rivets through. Look at that. The rivets didn't even need to be punched through. So here's our old backing plate. This is getting tossed. And this clutch is actually, the bumpers are in good shape on this. It doesn't really seem like there's any play. So we'll just pull off our primary drive gear.
pretty snug. I'm actually surprised. We're not going to reuse these bumpers either. Okay, so at this point, we are done with the OEM basket, backing plate, and the bumpers. So I'm going to go ahead and clean up this primary drive gear, and then we'll start working on the Henson. All right, nothing but the good stuff left. So we're going to go ahead and remove these screws. They are T25 Torx screws. And I just want to make note of this one more time before I peel the screw off. Uh, Henson does put a sticker on here warning you that you need to use Loctite 272 on these screws. So like I said, I will be elaborating on that, but I did want to mention it one more time. God, these stupid stickers. I hate sticker residue. So there's our backing plate. This is like ultra light. Feels like a piece of paper. And here are all of the new bumpers. Looks just like the stock setup for the most part. All right, now before we go any further, we're gonna clean out our threads. And we're also gonna clean off the threads on these screws. And the reason for that is because we wanna make sure that this Loctite 272 um, has the best adhesion possible. And it may seem really overkill, but the last thing you want is for your clutch to start loosening up and cause catastrophic engine failure because it can happen. And this is such an easy step. So it's really easy. We're just gonna take a little bit of gum cutter and we're gonna jet it in the holes. I'm not gonna do like scrubbing them or anything like that. And then we'll do the same thing on the back of these threads. And it's just a safety precaution to make sure that this stuff bonds correctly. Now Loctite 272 Red is not just regular Loctite. So there are different types of red Loctite. Um, this is the most heavy duty Loctite, at least in red, that you can get. And uh, it's gonna have a little bit better heat retention uh, than uh, the 271. So 271, you can see on the back of the Loctite uh, box right here, 271 is the typical stuff that you can find in like Walmart and everything. And you might be able to get 272 in Walmart, I'm not sure. Um, but then the 272 right here, you can see goes 150 degrees higher. So it's 300 degrees for the 271, 450 for the 272. Um, and I imagine that your clutch assembly gets pretty hot from all the friction. And that's probably the primary reason that they want you using the 272. So now before we put our gear on there, um, what I like to do is lube up all these parts because it's gonna be a, a dry start if uh, if you don't do this. Even if you put oil in the in the crankcase and everything, um, all these parts, you know, there's some spots that there's the oil is just not gonna get there until the, the motor runs for a little bit. So it's good to do stuff like this. Uh, Henson says you can use uh, WD-40. I like to use the actual transmission fluid. So I'm gonna put some Flex Drive 30. This is the trans fluid that I uh, particularly like to use. So I just wanna be careful not to get it in those threads that we just cleaned up. And uh, what I'm gonna do is just put a dot. Then I'll take a Q-tip and kind of spread it around and just cover our surfaces. It doesn't have to be a lot. You just don't want um, the surfaces to be dry. Now we should be good to put our primary drive gear on. Now make note of the orientation. You see there's a lip here and not on this side. The lip faces upward. pops right in place. So now we're ready to put our backing plate on. You can see one side has countersunk holes and the other side no. So we're gonna put the countersink upwards. And then we got our 272 Loctite and we're gonna put thread lock on the inside and on the outside of the threads. Um, so we're gonna do both sides and uh, they even say in the Henson manual, you can't use enough, there's, you can't use too much Loctite. Uh, so they're really adamant on using Loctite. They do not want this thing backing off. And we're actually gonna take one step further than Loctite. I'll show you in a second, but I'm just gonna put a little bit in each one of these. All right, now we're gonna torque these things down. Um, you probably could get away with snugging these 
uh, but you know me, man, I'm the torque Nazi. So I want to torque these things down the spec. Now in the Hinson manual, they say to go to 3.3 foot pounds of torque. Um, torque wrench that I have right here is probably not optimal. You can see I'm using reducers. Um, it's a pretty big torque wrench, but it does go down to one foot pound. Uh, it doesn't have increments and decibels. So I'm going to do four foot pounds and I think we'll be just fine. I think what, uh, really what is, what's important is having a consistent amount of tightness on each one of these screws. And you do want to grip your torque wrench on the handle, not up here. I've done that in other videos and you guys called me out. So I appreciate you guys teaching me that little trick. You actually get different torque amounts depending on where you grab your torque wrench. So that's just a little tip right there. So I'm just going to go around. It might be a little difficult because we got to hold this basket. Um, so we'll just tighten these things up. And that's all it takes. It's 3.3 pounds, well, four in my case, but it's really barely anything. All right, so these are all evenly torqued and Loctited. We Loctited the crap out of them. Look at all that Loctite. I'm gonna wipe that off right now. Um, but you might be thinking, that's gotta be it, man. Like, would you really need any more security? Well, Henson actually recommends that you take a punch and you peen the tip of the screws that's coming through. And that's gonna mushroom um, the screw just a little bit to prevent it even further from backing out. So I'm gonna put down a rag just to protect our gear and I'm gonna go ahead and peen them right now after I wipe off this Loctite. All right, so these are all peened. You can see I just hit them in the center. That should mushroom the tip just slightly enough so that it wouldn't back off. This one I actually slipped off the edge a little bit. Um, I've heard of people peening in the center of the screws as well on the edge, like this one. Um, so regardless, this thing is not gonna go anywhere. Between the Loctite, cleaning this thing up before we Loctited it and peening it, this is a solid clutch basket. All right, guys, so our Henson clutch basket is all finished. We've got our primary drive on there nice and solid. So now we're gonna move into Project 250R and uh, we're gonna go into the actual clutch pack that I decided to use for this. Now, I went back and forth with a couple other um, options and what I landed on was the Niels clutch mod. So the Niels clutch setup is really popular amongst 250R guys. Um, essentially what it is, it's all OEM parts from Honda. They're made up from CR500, uh, 400EX and 250R parts. Um, together, it's supposed to be a really solid combination. It's supposed to be very reliable, have good longevity, and it's supposed to hold a lot of power. Um, I've heard of guys running 60 to 70 horsepower with these things and experiencing no problems at all. So that's why I chose to do the Niels clutch setup. All right, now here is our clutch setup laid out here. And I do apologize, guys, I'm missing two pieces. I accidentally ordered six clutch fibers and I do need seven. And I also need a thrust washer. And um, for purposes of this video, it doesn't really matter, but I did just want to make, make mention of that because for guys that are familiar with the Niels Clutch Mod, you might be counting these plates and saying something's wrong. So essentially what the Niels Clutch Mod is, we have factory 250R um, fibers. We're gonna use factory 250R steels. And amongst the, the 250R steels, there is one 400EX steel. And uh, it might not make any sense right now, but here is the purpose. So clutches work. Um, based on friction and pressure. So the more friction and pressure that you have on your clutch pack, the more power it can withstand and uh, typically the longer it will last. So to increase the amount of clamping power of this setup, we have some washers that are going to go on top of our springs and put create a little bit more pressure. And we're also using the 400EX plate. And what this is going to do is create more pressure because it's a little bit thicker. And I'm gonna show you with a pair of calipers the difference, but you can just see the 400EX plate is thicker. So that's gonna make our clutch stack taller and therefore the spring pressure will be more, causing a little bit more of a tighter clutch pack. So I'll show you guys right here. This is the 250R plate. Looks like about 1.5 millimeters. And here is the 400EX. That one's about two millimeters. So we're adding about a half a millimeter to the clutch pack. So from what I read on forums, the 400EX plate is supposed to go in the middle of the clutch pack, and these springs are from a CR500. Now, these are actually softer springs than the regular 250R springs, and that's because the 250R has a five-spring setup, 
whereas the CR500 uses six springs, so it doesn't, they don't require quite as much tension. Um, you could use 250R springs, but it'll make a really stiff clutch pull. And apparently this is like the magic setup. I've never actually run a quad with it. Um, I talked with Blake from DBC Racing and he said all the guys that he rides with in the 250R group absolutely love this setup. It's supposed to last really long. And like I said, it's supposed to handle power. I've heard of guys with 70 horsepower running this and it still doesn't slip. Um, but supposedly like the 60s range is a, it's a safe setup to use for that. And then of course, these washers, these are actually drain washers for a 400EX or 250R. And I'll have all the part numbers and quantities that you need for this setup in the description below. And we're not actually gonna be completely building the clutch because um, you know, not, we won't be doing that until we're actually putting the bottom end together, but we can prepare our plates and our fibers because that's something that you wanna do beforehand. And that way, like I was saying before, when we throw this motor together, we'll be able to just pop it right in as an assembly and it'll be a little bit less time consuming. Paper plates, baby. All right, guys, so the first thing we're gonna do is pre-soak our clutch fibers. So this is a pretty critical step. Um, I've heard of guys doing this different ways and I've even made videos talking about it before. Um, there's some controversial steps. Some guys say that you have to soak them for like at least an hour beforehand. There's other guys that put the fibers in and they don't soak them at all. And then they hold the clutch in and let the motor, uh, let oil get in between the fibers and then they let the motor sit for a little bit and let the oil soak in and then they just run it. And then there's guys like me that coat these with oil and let it absorb into the fibers. I don't actually soak them per se. Um, now I've soaked them before and I've done the method that I'm gonna show you today, which is just basically putting oil on them and uh, letting it soak in, but not like drenching them. And I've never had a problem with clutches burning up or slipping really bad, um, as long as I'm using good fluid. So that's the method we're gonna use today. Paper plate makes it easy for cleanup. So we'll be using our Flex Drive 30, just like before, because this is what we're gonna be running in the transmission. Super easy task, guys. I'll put this uh, disc right on there. Get a little bit of fluid going and then uh, just going to get dirty with my fingers and make sure that all of our surfaces are nice and covered and then we'll leave them in a stack so that they can soak for a little bit while we work on our plates. So once you spin them around a couple times and make sure all your areas are covered, just give them a second look. And that's really all you need. You don't have to like dunk them in oil or soak them in or anything. You don't have to waste any oil or nothing. Just leave them like that. That's going to soak into the fibers and it's going to work just fine. Get that out of the way. All right. Now we're going to work on our discs. So you can see the 250R ones are smooth and the 400EX one is dimpled, which is kind of interesting. These are both Honda OEM. No aftermarket stuff here. From what I understand, the OEM stuff holds up the best. Um, you could run aftermarket if you want. Um, but like I said, for whatever reason, this seems to be the magic combination. So what I'm going to do with these is a little bit of prep. I'm just going to scuff these up. And uh, what we'll do is lay out a piece of 320 grit sandpaper. And um, we'll go in like a figure eight form. Just kind of scuff up the surfaces. And that's going to take off any bumps or imperfections. Uh, we don't want to go too hard on it because it may, you'll be taking them down and out of spec. Uh, but just doing that lightly is going to take any imperfections or flats or um, depressions or anything out of it. And it's also going to scuff up the surfaces, which will give it a little bit more grip. All right, guys, so we're going to do this backyard style. So what we're going to do here, we've got some 320 grit, wet or dry sandpaper. You can pick this stuff up for like a dollar a sheet. Um, and what we're going to do is tape it down to this bench. This is the super flat bench. There's no imperfections or anything on it. Um, realistically, if you wanted to be a pro, you could put it down on a piece of uh, like fresh glass or a, a, a granite countertop would work really well. Any kind of super smooth surface is going to be what you want. You don't want to have any kind of like bellies or things like that. Even if it looks flat, a good way to test it is to take a ruler, a, like a new <laughs> straight ruler, put it on its side around the area and make sure that you're working with a flat surface. Uh, you just want to make sure that you're not ruining your clutch discs. So we're going to take this and we're going to tape it down to our table. Now I like to wet my sandpaper. I think it makes it last a little bit longer and it lubricates a little bit, makes it easier to work with. So I'm gonna spray it down with some water and then you just wanna dry these plates off immediately after. So we'll go ahead and spray down our paper and we're just gonna go in a figure eight. 
You want to try to apply even pressure as you're doing this. You don't have to go crazy with it. Just smooths it and scuffs it slightly. All right, now our plates and fibers are ready to go. All cleaned off nice and good. So I will show you how these go in here. I may have to take these back apart and then restack them once they're in the quad. But for purposes of this video, we'll throw it in there and I may be able to slide it on. Um, so our kicker gear would be slid in from the back. Uh, it goes behind the primary drive gear. We have this washer that goes in here, our clutch boss. And then what we'll do is you always start with a fiber and end with a fiber. So we will take our fibers and stack them in there. 250R ones are pretty universal all the way around. Then we'll go with a 250R plate. And now there's rounded edges and sharp edges. I like to keep them pointing in the same direction. So whether you have them all facing outward or all facing inward is up to you, but try to keep them in the same orientation. And now for this third disc, that's where I'm gonna put the 400EX plate, right in the middle of the pack. And then of course we would have one more fiber going on top of there. Like I said, guys, I accidentally ordered six plates instead of seven, but for this video, it's really not an issue. Uh, once that plate comes in, I'll go ahead and soak it and put it in the stack. Okay guys, so beyond that, you would essentially put your thrust bearing in there, thrust washer, clutch pusher, um, your pressure plate, and then put your springs in, your washers, and tighten everything down to spec. Now there is one other part that I didn't mention with this Neil's clutch setup, and that's getting an extra thrust washer. Um, you're making the clutch pack a little bit thicker, and that can cause your clutch adjustment to be maxed out. So by adding the extra thrust washer, it's going to even everything out and make your clutch adjustment a lot easier. It's not always necessary, but in the case that you do need that washer, it's good to have it on hand. It's like a $3 part, so I definitely recommend buying that with this kit, and I'll have that part number listed in the description below. Now, all the steps we took today to set up this clutch basket may seem a bit excessive. You could just throw everything together and it would probably operate, um, but taking the time to sand down your clutch discs, soak your clutch plates, use the correct amount of Loctite, torquing your bolts, peening the bolts, all that stuff, when you do that, you're setting yourself up for a clutch that's gonna perform optimally and it's gonna last you a long time and it's gonna be reliable. So I will have all the parts and parts numbers in the description below for this clutch setup. I'll also have a link to this hints and clutch basket and all of the tools necessary to do the job. So I will see you guys on Monday for bike of the week. Um, our cases should be back from DBC racing probably early to mid next week. And we'll get to building the bottom end. Don't forget to check out your Mike Sabo merch. You can pick up a shirt just like this one. All the proceeds go to helping out the channel. And hopefully this coronavirus bullshit uh, passes over really quickly because I don't know about you guys, but it's really getting annoying. Uh, but anyways, guys, have a great weekend. Stay safe, stay sickness free, and I will see you in the next one. I love all you guys. Y'all rock. Peace out.